Hello, and welcome to part four of how to make a print in place dragon. Today, we're going to be working on the final part, and that is making the legs. So let's see. Let's take a look at what at least one other person did in their articulated dragon. And this is what I want you to see. There are There's a connection between one body length and the rest of the leg. Now, all you have to do is when you create this, you're just going to be putting the same exact thing here. Okay. Mine is not going to look like this. Yours can if you want to. Take a look at the detail and see if you can duplicate it. I'm going to show you an easy way to have your own print in place leg attached to your dragon. So let's get started. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to take out a leg from here or a piece of the body from here. I'm going to control C copy and then I'm going to open up a new design and then I'm going to hit control V to paste it there. All right. So there it is. Now the leg, I'm going to design it around this piece. Why am I doing this? Well, the reason is I, I want you to just focus on the leg and not anything else in the body. That's pretty much it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drag a half sphere and change it to green. All right. <clears throat> there it is. And also a torus. I'm going to change that to green. I'm going to change this to 90 degrees. I'm going to change the angle here, rotate it 90 degrees. And we're going to put it right here, but I'm going to move it up. Now, very important, you see what this looks like over here. So we're going to move this up. <clears throat> now I'm going to move this. I'm going to make it a little bit of an angle here. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. Just it looks like 11 degrees, but yeah, that's fine. Now I'm going to move it to the right. Uh, just a few millimeters. I'm at one millimeter right there. Now here, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not concerned about any filament uh, falling off because if you notice when it prints, it'll print going upward and there won't be an issue with this. Not at all. No filament will get in the way or will fall off when it's printing and it doesn't need any support. So we're good. <clears throat> now I'm going to move this over here. And let's see, yeah, I'm gonna need another torus. I'll just duplicate this one, control D. I'll move it here and I'm gonna rotate it. So from this angle, I'm just gonna go this way, 90. Actually, I'm gonna go past 90. Let me zoom in here so I can get a better view of this. Just a little bit, because right now it's, I think it's off by 11 degrees. I'm gonna go five, okay. Let me zoom out a little bit and then rotate it so you can see. Now this, if I were to print it just like this, it would not, it would, you know, fall down. So I'm going to click the letter D while this is selected, click the letter D and it goes down. Then I'm going to rotate it. When I did that, it made it go up here, but it also made under, made it go underneath the bed here. So I'm going to click the letter D and there we go. Now I'm also going to move it to the right using the arrows just because I want it to move precisely. Okay. That looks like it's plenty of space. I'm going to move it back one. Okay. <clears throat> now when this prints, it should be just fine. Okay. There should be no issues here in the printing because it doesn't need any supports this way. doesn't need any supports that way. But here's what I've noticed. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. This is under the printing bed. That's not good. So I'm going to click the letter D here and we're good to go. I'm actually, I'm going to add one more thing here just because I, I don't want this to fail when it prints. In fact, I'm, I don't need this. I'm going to duplicate this one here. Control D. I'm going to move it right here, but I'm also going to get rid of this part here. So I'm going to put a block there and I'm not sure if you can see that here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hit the shift button. I'm going to hold the shift button and then also select that one. Then I'm going to group the two. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see what else. Did I get anything else here? I think I'll rotate it a little bit. Let me check out what it, check out what it looks like here. It looks like part of the dragon here. Perfect. Exactly what we want. 
All right, let's get a better view here. Great, we're done with this part. That's gonna hold up in place. Nothing's gonna fall off, which is exactly what we want, you know, for, for it to be stable. Now let's focus on the actual leg. I'm gonna duplicate this one, Control D, and I'm gonna move it this way. And I'm going to flatten it a little, but also make it longer. It's about 30 right now, and that's fine. It's not centered, so. That's about right, but I'm gonna check it anyways. I'm gonna go L. Now, before I click on this, I don't want this to move, so I'm gonna click on this first and then center this. All right, that's good enough. I'm gonna add another one of these to the front, Control D. Oops, it looks like both of them were selected. I'm gonna get rid of that one. I just wanted a little one of these. Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink this part because this is gonna be like the foot that has other parts sticking out right there. This is gonna be like a toe, okay? So I'm gonna make that smaller. And again, I'm making this pretty basic. However, if you wanted to add something, change this any way you want, please do because this is your dragon and you wanna make it look the way you want it to. Now the important parts again are that you don't need any supports in any of the things we're doing here, none at all. Very important because you don't want to add supports to one thing, but because you might have to add supports to everything else and it's going to be really bad. Whoa. I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to uh, change the angle here and then I'm going to move with the arrow. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this one, move it here to the center, and then rotate it. If you really wanted to, I'm gonna move it a little bit more because it looks like it's not completely centered. It's a little bit off. Let me change it a little bit by one millimeter. All right, that's not bad. So here, most basic part, there you go. Also what I would do is I would uh, take one or two of these right here and place them here, okay? Drag them here, put them there. If you really felt like it, you can take some of these and you know make it scaly to make it look more like whatever pattern you have here. You can copy a little bit of it and put it there, but we're not done yet. Because if you had this attached to your dragon, it's not gonna look very cool. So I'm gonna duplicate this one one more time. I'm gonna move up. I'm gonna increase it. Let's see, right now it's at 20 by 25. Yeah, 20 by 20. Let's go 25 maybe. Yeah, let's say. 25, that's close enough. So I'm gonna hit duplicate again. Whoa, not what I want. Duplicate again, Control D. I'm gonna make that one a hole and I'm gonna move this down. Let's say, <clears throat> uh, let's say 1.5. Also, while we're here, I'm gonna shrink this. Okay, I'm gonna hit Shift and then I'm gonna move this one up. What I want is uh, a layer. Let's see if I can see underneath here. And I'm not sure if it's centered, so I'm going to center it. Uh, there you go. I'm going to center it, and I'm going to make sure I just select these two, just those two. And I'm going to align. And it looks like they're already perfectly aligned. I'm good with this. So I'm going to group these two, click the group button. What we have now is a hollow half sphere. Oops, I have to be careful when I move it from that angle. And I'm gonna to try to cover as much of this as possible. So let's move this down with the black arrow key, or the black arrow. And then I'm going to rotate it. <clears throat> this is gonna cover this part right here. Now, if you notice, it's touching that. You don't want that because it's gonna make it uh, stiff and it's not gonna be movable, which is one of the goals here. So at this point, you can, manipulate it, make it longer, but you don't want it touching any of that loop thing. Okay. I'm gonna click the letter T so I can see through it. There, that's not bad. What I also want though is a stronger bond here. So I'm gonna make it go down a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. There you go. And I'm gonna rotate just a little bit more and I'm gonna go down a little bit more. Control and down arrow is what I'm gonna use. Oops, okay. there you go. 
So right now it's not touching anything. This is gonna print in place with no problem at an angle. And it should be fairly secure. Now when this leg moves, it might be touching that. So be aware there's gonna be limited movement here, but now that you have it, you can also add one of these things on there, right? Uh, you can, uh, I wonder if I have it in my favorites, your favorites or my creations. Right, there it is. Of course, I would have to rotate it. And of course, I'd have to, basic shapes, get rid of that. Come on up, there you go. Whenever you're doing that chili thing, don't forget, I always have the link here, but if you already have them, you don't have to do this part right here because you already have them. I'm just gonna move it over a little bit. Come on, I forgot to click away. And how is it? Oh, now it's over here. Instead of moving it, I'm just gonna do this. Make this bigger. There it is. All right, so there we go. I'm going to group, click on that. Now, of course, what? Did something happen? Okay, I'm gonna go down here. Now, you should know by now, if you're at part four, that you don't want it interfering with the loop thing, right? The spike can actually be pointing in any direction and you can make multiples and put it over here. Great, got it. You can also add texture, great, very important. Once you have your finished leg, here's what you need to do. You need to make sure you select that torus, that torus and the rest of your design. And one of two ways to make it one complete thing is to, like we've done before, make it your creation, create shape. You, you will not say, oh, okay, good. Because this is a small object, it didn't take very long to have this picture show up like it didn't do in part two, I believe. Name it, uh, dragon leg, dragon leg, dragon leg. And then you save it. I guess I should do that too. Dragon leg, dragon egg and dragon comma leg comma save. Now <clears throat> that is one way to have it ready for you here that you can just drag it over here. Here it is. The other way is to select again the parts that you want. I'm just gonna do this very carefully there. Did I get it all? I don't think I got that toe. Okay. And then you wanna export it as an STL And I think mine's gonna ask me where I want it. Desktop, sure, stunning, blah, blah, blah. Uh, name it dragon. Wow, I think my hand's in the wrong place. Dragon leg. And I would save it in my downloads section, downloads. And then you can import it. Import, choose a file. And I just created something in my downloads. Dr oh, downloads, oh, it's not in a time order. Want it as a list, there it is, dragon legs. I can open it, import it. Now, the reason you wanna do this is because Tinkercad will freeze up if it has to deal with multiple parts. It's the same exact thing, only this, it, Tinkercad considers this one part and it makes it a lot easier to export your final dragon because at this point, you are done. You can just remove your leg here. Well, I'm just gonna remove all of it. Hopefully it works. I got all of them. Did I get all of them? That one. I think the toes need to be secured. And let's try it. Okay, good. So when you have your final leg, you want to put it in here. And then you want to duplicate it. And then you use the mirror tool. Click it here. And then drag it over here on this side. Again, you're checking the back to make sure everything is good. And now you can put your dragon together and you can, you're can you ready to export it. Now, if you are exporting your dragon and you notice that Tinkercad is not actually letting you export it, then you probably did not follow the step that said to make this into one piece like I just showed you with the legs. This should all be one piece. The head of the dragon should be one piece. All of these should be one piece each. That way Tinkercad is not working with thousands of pieces, but just maybe less than a hundred. 
and it'll be more likely to export just the way you want it. And you'll have your own very own, your very own dragon to customize and print as many times as you like. Unless of course you're in my class, you can print it once correctly. If it fails, you can print it again. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this and I can't wait to see what kind of dragons you make. Thank you.